Oh my gosh, you're here too! Oh my god! Well, well, we got you. What? Well, well, we've got you here. Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, you're here too. Tell us a little bit about Patreon. Okay. Um. Well, Patreon is a is a great uh. A great service where you can go and you can get extra commentary tracks from us and you can get uh extra episodes from us and all sorts of crazy crap and uh you know it only costs you uh one to five dollars or or more if you'd like we have a bunch of current patrons uh, and i kind of don't want to read them right now jess can you do it no you gotta read them frick all right, our current <laughs> patrons are Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunick, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Tiskier, Colin McLeod, Fire of September, Mina Muniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Alice in Wonderland, B Way Flicks, Michael Johan, Nathaniel Stacy Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Luna Rocks 222, you're a drag, Joel Witter, <laughs> William Watt, and Carrie Hearn. We love you. Uh, you, you. You love them so much you didn't even get their names close to what's on the page. Yggdrasil, William Vaunt. <laughs> Why did you find a fucking S in there? Shut up, Jess. You try to read it that fast. <laughs> Regal Droret Witter. Yggdrasil? There's not an S, what the fuck? You just want to say Yggdrasil, bro. No, no, Yggdrasil is the tree of life in Norse mythology. These it's a compliment. Give us a little extra financial support that helps us keep the lights on here, musicals with cheese. If you would like to join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks such as patron only commentaries, our episodes a day earlier, even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. All right, Andrew, is there anything else we should say before we go on to it? No. All right, let's get on to the show. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jesse McAmel. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. <laughs> And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew to like musical theater. How are you doing today, Andrew? Well, other than that complete disaster, I'm doing fantastic. Well, I'm glad for you. Um, you know, it's getting a little rainy out there. I think I, I think I, I, I hear a baby screaming outside. Do you hear that? Hang on, let me get the whole town together and we'll just start dancing. Let's go. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. I'm uh, telling the story time and dancing around and song it doesn't sound anything like the song they sing. Uh, we're doing the once on this island. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we dance. We dance to the music. Yeah. On This Island is a one-act musical with book and lyrics by Lynn Alrens and music by Stephen Flattery. Based on the 1985 novel My Love, My Love, or The Peasant Girl by Rosa Guy, it is set in the French Antilles Archipelago. Did I say that right? Archipelago? Archipelago. Archipelago in the Caribbean Sea. It concerns a peasant girl on a tropical island who uses the power of love to bring together people of three different social classes. Let me state that again. It concerns a peasant girl on a tropical island who uses the power of love to bring together people of different social classes. The original Broadway production ran from 1990 to 1991. And the West End production opened in 1994, where it won the 1995 Laurence Olivier Award for the Best New Musical. The musical was revived on Broadway in a production that opened on December 3rd, 2017 at the Circle in the Square Theater. Andrew, what did you think of Once on this Island? Sorry, I had to compose an important email. Uh, Once on this Island is... I actually thought it was really fun. I thought it was really fun. (laughs) I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad. I really like this musical. I feel like for a long time, no one really gave it much attention. Um, well, it's, I mean, it's a little short on the shorter side for a musical, which is honestly probably a good thing because sometimes they can overstay their welcome and this one definitely doesn't. Uh, it's got a really fun story to it and I like all the very, uh, over the top supernatural, uh, fantasy type elements to it. Um, but it's also grounded by 
uh, a romance, which I don't know. And a lot of the music is really good. Very uh, bouncy and fun. It's like if Jimmy Buffett had like some taste. It's like if Jimmy Buffett wrote a bunch of songs and then someone else saw those songs and put them into a shredder and destroyed them and then wrote new songs that are better. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, yep. what is the plot of Once on this Island? Okay, so <clears throat> there's kind of like, um, what do they call it? Like a framing device um, that they open with, which is a, a little girl on an island is like scared of lightning. So a bunch of people come out and start singing and dancing and telling this story. And the remainder of the show is the uh, the story they tell. Although they, they do come back to the framing device like once or twice. Um, so the story that they tell is about this um, this girl, which her name is... I'm. This is worse than our patrons. I can't pronounce Timun. it. Timoon. <laughs> Timoon. So the moon... And she's got a friend named... She has a friend named Pumbaa. That actually isn't true. <laughs> Well, Timoon is the main character, and she goes, uh, she's, she's, um, in trouble, and so the gods help her by putting her in a tree or something like that, or covering her with a tree. Something with a tree. They save her from a storm with a tree. Um, and then... There was someone in the tree! Not... Well, she might have been in the tree. I couldn't tell if she was supposed to be under the tree or in the tree. Um, but, I don't know, that's probably me just not hearing the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> a common thing that happens. Um, <laughs> you know, Andrew just kind of half pays attention to most of these musicals. I listen to them, it's just I don't remember lyrics that well. Um, Words are hard for him. I'm not an English major like Jess. I'm not either. I, I majored in film, and I think you know that. I do know that. I just said that to confuse people. All right. Nope. So then Timon, Timon grows up, um, <laughs> and... She wants to be a fast driver like all the people she sees driving around really fast. And the gods laugh at her, but then the goddess of love is like, let's just let her do the thing she wants to do. And so they decide to almost kill this guy just to for this, I guess. They have, they have this guy, Daniel, crash into her house or something. <laughs> Is that how it happens? Is that how I finally meet the guy in my dreams, Andrew? He's just, just gonna, he's just gonna crash right into your house. He's gonna plow into the living room. And you're gonna be like, oh, you're the one. Well, I mean, literally, though, she falls in love with him when he's still knocked out. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of Disney stories that reverse that in the same way. I, I understand that. I'm just, I feel like people criticize those stories, so I think I'm allowed to criticize this story as well. <laughs> nope, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who said you're allowed to have an opinion on this show about your opinion? Shut up. Okay, so uh, this is like a, a rich guy was driving a car who drives cars really fast and he gets knocked out and so Timon decides to uh, help save him, help heal him. And then when he wakes up, they fall in love. There's some other thing where he has to go back to his house and she has to leave her family to go follow him. Um, so that he, she has to do that too. And then at the end... People, heroes, journey stuff. Yeah, and then at the end, uh, Daniel has to get married to someone else and and she gets all upset and tries to kill him and then they kick him out of the house kick her out of the house and then she just sits outside the gate i feel like you would have to like you know put her in prison for attempted murder but <laughs> i guess just put her hey. directly outside your house is enough she's not a direct threat at this moment so she's fine yeah and then daniel gets married to the other girl and gives her a kiss or something over through the gate and then she goes and drowns the end such a happy story. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of happy, I guess, because she, she's reborn as a tree, I think. Yeah, in a way. In that musical theatery way. Yeah. Although, if you look at the actual story, it's kind of like she falls in love with somebody, helps him recover, and then he's just like, oh, well, I already got to marry this other person, so whatever. <laughs> now, this is such a weird musical. Like, I love it. It's great. It's a lot of fun, but it's weird. <laughs> Okay, so what what do you think is so weird about it? It just doesn't follow the musical theater structure, but it kind of does. Like, the fact that it's a one-act is really nice, because I like one-act musicals. Like, it's weird when they throw uh, intermission in the middle. I know we talk about two poops and how we always need, like... Well, uh, with a one-act, you could probably only take one poop. It'd be okay. <laughs> one poop before the show. <laughs> 
Um, but it does have the highlights of musical theater. Like she has a very clear "I want" song, and it's very nice, and it makes sense. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's like no other like high tributes to that. There's no charm song just for the sake of a charm song. It feels it's it's an odd feeling show. I think I liked that though. They kind of they kind of trimmed the fad a little bit. You know, it's like it feels like a lot of hands have been like altering this over the years. I suppose I I what I kind of get from it is that every song is a specific plot point and it just keeps moving, which is nice. It's rare. It's there's, very rare. There's really no songs that's like, well, that could probably yeah, get cut. cut that. Yeah, that could probably be gone. But I guess it's kind of fun. Like that doesn't happen in this. Everything is there for a reason. The I think the only I'd thing say the closest to just a fun song was the so- Mama song. <laughs> Mama will provide. Yeah, but even that is her. That's her journey to uh right. away from her family and it's it's uh the earth god saying that she'll help mm-hmm. which yeah it probably could get cut that one but it is it is technically a plot point it's so much fun though like i have no regrets like so for context me and andrew watched the 2017 broadway revival um bootleg a lot of sand there is a lot of sand a lot they turned the circle in the square theater into like this incredible looking like beach area. It looked like so cool. Is that real sand? Do you think? Like, do you think there's actors? Yeah, it's real sand. Actors have sand in their shoes afterwards, and oh, a hundred percent. Because I've seen like making up, like they have actual animals there, like goats and shit roaming around. Yeah, have you ever danced in sand? It's not a good thing. I hate sand in general. It's coarse, it's grainy. It gets, it gets everywhere. everywhere. It's it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Not like here. Here everything's soft and smooth. Yeah, um, I don't know where you are that everything is smooth, but... <laughs> it's Michigan. <laughs> Michigan, you drive into Michigan and everything's rubber. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's why. Um, we are notoriously have the worst roads in the entire country. <laughs> well, I mean, ha- you how many lakes do you guys have city. there? You, you got like the state of like a bazillion lakes? <laughs> We're known for our lakes and our lighthouses and nothing else. Fair All enough. Right, Andrew, which god are you? Which god do you relate with most? Obviously, the edgelord god. Come on. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog, god of death. <laughs> he was such a, like, a ridiculous thing to pop up. Like The music that goes alongside him is like so ridiculous, too. I I like the song, uh, the Forever Yours song that he does, though. Yeah, that's great. It doesn't fit with the rest of the show in a weird way. It feels so different from the well, rest of Well, it's it. the villain. You know, he's allowed to have a little bit of a different... Is it a she in this one? I feel like it was a she in this one. It, I, yeah, I mean, it's been, there's been so many versions, dude. I don't really... It doesn't matter that much. I just, I keep saying um, he because... Yeah, it was a lady. Their name, Merle, their name is, is Papa Gay. Papa G. Papa G. <laughs> Papa, Papa. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, I just, I see Papa and I'm like, he. <laughs> Here, gender is a little bit more fluid. Yeah, their name is like actually, even... it's short for Papa Gender. That's their name. <laughs> I mean, even in the, the Mama Will Provide song, I forget that character's actual name. I... Well, we know gods don't have genders. Yeah, which I kind of like. Um, but my favorite guy. I mean, Loki gave birth to a horse, just... but also. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite god? I I liked um the goddess of love. Or, or Azuli. Z- Azuli. Yeah. yeah. I think and I just might be because I'm a sucker for Leia Salonga. I think Agwe's costume was kind of crappy, to be honest. Why? It was just like they were like, how do we represent him as water? And they're just like, oh, we'll just wrap him in blue. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Asaka, the mother of Earth, where she's just got, like, this jersey on and, like, a little bit? I actually kind of liked that, because she's supposed to be, like, earthy, and, like, she's dressed like a person would dress, and I, I don't know, I kind of, I could see Which is, it. Okay, I, I like that, now that you've put that into my head. Whereas, Ogwe, I mean, he fit, the, the, it fits, because, yeah, water is blue, um, but... No, water is clear, it's just... Just shut your mouth, okay? Water's as blue as it comes, okay? I love blue water and I drink it all day long. Mouthwash is blue water. <laughs> the stuff that represents period flow on commercials is blue water. Shouldn't that at least be red water? I don't. We're so <laughs> Do afraid of that, that stuff, Jess. Everyone hates We're that. We're so afraid of ladies and 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 the vaginal flow. I mean, 
I guess I probably wouldn't want to see that on TV. Probably nobody would, would want to see that on TV. I want to see all the clots and shit. Show it to me. Okay, there's, there's actually probably some people that do want to see that on TV. I take that back. <laughs> you gotta see the reality so we can start, like, funding these and getting women free tampons. I mean, I agree with that. That's mostly where I stand on that. <laughs> as soon as we realize how necessary that shit is, that it isn't just something you can hold in for a day, because a lot of dumbasses think that shit. Wait, really? That's something people think? Yeah, I heard a guy, a motherfucker, like a week ago say, I don't get what girls just can't just hold in their tampon. I can hold in my poop all day. Motherfucker, do you not know that it's just work? I mean, that's pretty dumb. This guy was in his 50s and married. That's a good relationship with a lot of communication, I'm sure. <laughs> I've been thinking about it all week. I'm not gonna lie. It's been on my brain. Do you think he puts tampons in his butt to keep the poop in? <laughs> Can we make a t shirt out of that, guys? <laughs> would you buy that? Nobody would buy that, Jess. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, back to the back to the story. You sound like you need a tampon in your butt. What do you think of all the Daniel stuff? It is cliche and like the least fun part of the story. If that yeah, makes and sense. he kind of he kind of is unlikable, especially near the end when he like ditches her. He feels like a prop more than a character. Yeah, and I know that's used a lot as like dismissing like a lot of romantic stories and musicals. But this is one of the times where. Everything else is just so interesting. You got all these gods, and then you just got this boring ass white guy and like his stupid story. Well, I mean, they give him a cool backstory where like his family's cursed and can't they can't leave the island and <laughs> yeah. But there's no resolution to that. It's kind of like cool mo motive still murder. Like yeah, okay, you got you said that his history is pretty interesting, but him as a person isn't. Well, he likes to race his car around. At least at the beginning, he does. So he's George Lucas. Now this is pod racing. No, that's Anakin Skywalker, actually. George Lucas made the movie. Now this is vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> Very true. Anakin Skywalker actually did that. It's what bad. do you think? Kind of. What do you think of the framing device? Like, I almost feel like it's not necessary. I think it's too much fun to have that opening number, though. Like, I like the opening number. So I almost much. feel like they wrote that opening number, and they're like, "We can't fit this anywhere." So, like. Let's just make this other part. <laughs> and it's hard to set up this world without that framing device. I mean, I don't think it'd be that hard. Just if we just go right into it, it's like uh it's like Moana or something like that, where you just go right into it and there's gods and okay, I get it. I, I mean, that's with a movie where you can show a lot more things visually, where in a musical, I know you hate this, but you kinda gotta tell everyone everything. Well just put it in the little pamphlet that they have. <laughs> All right. Ah. Uh, um. Who? Okay. I. What did you think of our lead, Carol? Um. Timon. Timon. As you're calling. Timon. Her. Well, I mean, you're the one who said yeah. Pumba. Uh. uh well, because you said it wrong. All right. Well, I didn't say it at all. <laughs> all right. Well, Timon. Um. I like her. I think she's pretty. I think she's a really compelling. I think she's. Character. I mean, she's like the only developed character, honestly. Which right. is fine in this type of story, I feel like. Like, this, like, fantasy-type story, you really don't need more than one person. <laughs> I mean, this feels like, kind of like Alice in Wonderland, this girl found in this really, like, provincial world, being thrown into a brand new world and thinking, oh, what brave new world, and all such creatures and shit. Yeah, also, I'm on acid. <laughs> hey. Well, that's, that's Alice Maybe in Wonderland. Maybe she was. That's how Alice in Wonderland ends, with her walking into the sea to drown herself peacefully. I don't remember how Alice in Wonderland ends. It ends with her waking up. That is, like, the worst ending. Is that where they started that ending? <laughs> um, I mean, Blizzard of Oz starts with her waking up, too. That's... Ends with her waking up. I guess. It's a really crappy ending. <laughs> what? I woke up and it all didn't happen! What? Yeah, I like the ending of this. Well, what's your what's your thought on the drowning yourself? I think every musical should end in a suicide. It is very much a recurring thing in musical theater that suicides just keep on happening and be musicalized as either positive or negative things. It's true. I mean, how many suicides have we covered already? I mean, we got this one. Javert. Uh, Javert, Soleil Miz. We have uh, Dear Evan Hansen. The whole plot is that. 
Um, <laughs> we have uh, no. The whole plot is that because I'm going to be trying to do it by the end of the show. Uh, what's that? What's that one? Like, uh, she loves me. Where like the one character yeah, just randomly kills himself or tries to right in the middle of the show. Try to kill himself. Like that's such a lighthearted and show. We don't find out if he lived until act. Just such a lighthearted show, and then like the end of Act One is just like <laughs> gunshot, boom. <laughs> And then, like, it, right when he comes um, back, is like, I'm fine. <laughs> um, 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 do we count Bear as a suicide? Bear? Yeah, he takes a bunch of drugs and then goes on stage. Is that a suicide? Oh, yeah, that is, that is a suicide. I would say. Um, what else? Um, Jekyll and Hyde, that kind of ends with a suicide. That's true. Um. Next to normal, she slits her wrist trying to commit suicide. It doesn't work, but she tried. And suicide is a major theme in a lot of these shows. I mean, it kind of is. Um, Pierre tries to commit suicide through a duel, but it fails. Yes. Um, do, 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 do. Oklahoma, Judd tried to commit suicide. That is uh, another one, yeah. Um, Fun Home, it's literally about a suicide of a girl's dad. Kim from Miss Saigon. Yep, I almost forgot that one. Carousel, Billy Bigelow stabs himself rather than going can to prison. Can we just get a, make a list of these so we can get a bunch of edits with Neil Breen saying, I can't believe you killed yourself? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Give it to us! Inject it into my vein! <laughs> Take every musical suicide and please just add, I can't believe you committed suicide. It just works so well in Miss Saigon. Man, we are we are just veering right off topic, but you know what? This show is, this show is so short. <laughs> it's so... I really enjoyed it, though. Uh, can we talk about the dancing, since we're not going to do that in the music section, I'm sure? Yes, feel free to talk about the dancing. There's so much cool dancing in this, and they don't dance in, like, a normal style. They, like, are doing this, like, island-style dance with, like, a lot of leg movement. Um, really cool. Uh, I think one of the, the better scenes is the one at the ball where she uh, is asked to dance for everybody, and then everybody joins in dancing. That's really cool. Also, the opening, they open it right up with all the storytellers coming out and dancing. There's, Andrew loves there's dance a lot sequences. of dancing. <laughs> there's a lot of dancing in this. It, there is, and it's fun to watch. Like, it's not like traditional stage dancing, which I get bored of very easily. It's like very energetic, very alive, very Well, it honest. goes with the music. Like, I mean, the music is very, is like that. So I think it's great. Um, yeah, I, I want to go to that island. Is there anything you didn't like from this, like story-wise? Ooh, it does feel a little scatterbrained. I will say that it kind of does feel like it jumps from one thing to another thing to another thing, and it doesn't quite flow. Think, but aside from that, I think part of the problem with that is that when they go to the god characters, they just kind of like abandon everything and just have the god characters. I wish they kind of weaved yeah. it in a little bit more. Um, I mean, but aside from that, it's really hard to critique this because it well, is it's just, it's that it's successful. The scatter part of it is is one thing. I think the weakest thing though is is that they kind of go like the disney romance route where it's like she falls in love with him at first sight and and then she follows him across the world and it's like she's known him for like a day he doesn't even remember her but like like that that's an in some incredibly kind of corny romance stuff I'm not going to lie, in something like this, I can kind of let that be, opposed to Les Mis, where it's such a story set in reality. Yeah, and I think this kind of preempts that almost with their framing device, because this is framed as if it's like a, a like just a parable or something like that, where it's like, this is probably not right. real. Like, I doubt any of this actually it's happened. It's not a literal yeah. story. <laughs> Which I kind of prefer. I wish more musicals would kind of be like, yeah, this might not have happened, but it's fun. Shut the fuck up. Or at least market it that way. If you if you have a story like this and you just market it as, you know, a retelling of like a parable or, or like some a mythological tale or something like that, you know, you can do that. I mean, I've got a mythological tale pitch for you. Sure. Okay, you got these two brothers yep. that dream of touching touching the skies and being one amongst the clouds and eventually they learn to fly together. Okay, and one of them goes too high? Uh, uh, up, one of them lets it all go to his head, and the other one dies and because of it, and it's really sad. And then he's the only one left. His sister and his brother are all dead, and he gets to write the story about them. Hmm. What would we call it? This is the Wright Brothers musical. The Wright Brothers. You're right, brother. You're right, brother. Ha ha ha. Let's get into a mid-show announcement. Icarus Wings. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shill at you! Hey, today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, tell us a little bit about Patreon and who our donors are! Uh, Patreon is where you can donate to us if you want to give us some money and also receive some extra perks like, uh, after parties for some episodes and, uh, uh, commentary tracks, which is our main thing. Um... We like the common trees, and we'll be recording another one this Friday. Like very soon. Well, no, by this bit, by this point, it should be up there. Like unless everything falls oh, apart. Oh, it's gonna be a great one, or is a great one currently. Yes, it is a great one that we haven't filmed yet. So yeah, totally. All right, our current patrons are. Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Teskier, Colin McLeod, Fire September, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Allison Wonderland, B Way Flicks, um, Mikhail Joan, Michael Jo. M- Michelle Jo. Mike. Michael Joe. Michael Johan. I, I, I can't read. Nathaniel Stacy Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Luna Rocks 222. Uh, Jess, you want to do this one? Ah, uh, now I gotta figure out Ure- you are. Uregel... Uregel Droet Witter. I love your name, but I can't pronounce it. William Watt and Carrie Ahern. <laughs> they give us a little extra financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks, such as patron-only commentaries, our episodes a day early or even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. Are you ready to get this shit started, Andrew? Uh, we've already started. We're gonna continue. What? Oh, no! Um, yes, let's go. Two different worlds never meant to meet. But if the gods move our feet... What do you think of the opening number, the prologue slash we dance? All right, well, the music in this is pretty solid throughout, I will say. Um, they have a very, like, I mean, they really took the whole island thing to heart, I think, because it's got, like, a very islander feel in almost all of the music. I think there's quite a bit of steel drums featured, at least as far yes. as I could tell. Um, and we dance is where they just kind of introduce that style, and it's, it's a perfect introduction. Um, so... And it also introduces the kind of lackadaisical interaction with the audience as well as the story itself. Yeah. Like, you're in this world with them. It's not just like you're being told a story. It's like, we're all here, and you're here too, and feel the sand and smell the beach and all the that. The sand. We brought sand in. <laughs> we bought a goat in. Where'd they buy all that sand? Sand are us. Of course. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, the, I think the whole introduction is, is fantastic. In a, Do you think it serves well to introduce both the story as well as just the feel of the show altogether? I think it kind of doesn't introduce the story that great because it's not in the story and it's the people that are going to tell the story singing a different song, essentially. Um, so it doesn't introduce the story necessarily, but it does introduce kind of the feel that they're going to have in the uh, the way the story will be told as in, a, in the... Uh, the music Mm -hmm. and i just it's great it's a lot of fun come on come and see it we're on the island yeah i think what it really does very well is just kind of like get your attention it's like watch this you're watching this now you're in this (laughs) like this is a fun tale to have fun to but also it can get a little dark sometimes but mostly we're gonna be dancing Mostly it's dancing and steel drums, and that's really all you want. That's what you're there for. Dancing and steel drums is basically the alternate title of this show. <laughs> a strange and new white in a car going somewhere. Going back. Feel to go racing wherever you please Flying as free as a bird with his tail in the breeze Even the fish in the sea must belong to 
racing by. Oh God, oh God, are you there? What can I do to get you to look down and give in? Oh God, oh God, hear my prayer. I'm here in the field with my feet on the ground and my face in the air, waiting for life to begin. What's the next song you actually want to talk about? I want to talk about Waiting for Life. That's the like big I want yes. number. Um, I think they do a pretty good job with this. Yes. Like, they in the I want number, she's not only just saying that she wants her life to begin, like, she's also, it builds the world by saying, like, repeatedly, gods, oh gods, hear my prayer. Like, setting up that there's yeah. more than one god, they are a polytheistic company, and we're going to introduce those gods, and she, you later find out why she's counting on them specifically, and how they help her figure out her journey. I mean, who wouldn't count on Papa G? Papa G! And Mama G! Papa G! <laughs> <laughs> Papa G coming out! <laughs> What'd you think of this song? I thought it was very good. Um, it really introduces the character very well. Um, I mean, I think they have... She has a song before it as a little girl. Yeah, but that doesn't count. Is, but honestly, that that song is kind of like just introducing the fact that they're telling the story, and then she grows up, and this is the song that really matters. Yeah, this um, this is the first introduction to her as an adult, like as the character we're gonna see reflected through the story. And let's just say it. I mean, when you're a child, you're not a human, essentially. You're not. You're incomplete you're not, work, and I don't give credit for incomplete work. No credit. That's why if I was a teacher, I would fail every single student unless they were over eighteen. <laughs> Then I'd ask him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you doing this weekend? Uh, do you have any opinion on the uh, the God's song that is in response to her song? Um, I think it's it's interesting. Like it, it kind of sets. I like I like the interaction between the char the four characters. Right. It lets you. You got you got the three of them that are like antagonizing uh, Timon, <laughs> um, but then. But then the one is just like, we should help her. And they're all like, yeah, we should. Ha uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a comedy number, like more or it's, less. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think most of the God characters are kind of played for, for yucks. Either yucks or just <laughs> high energy. Yeah. Except for Papa G, who was played for the spook factor. Spook factor. <laughs> oh, God. They're scary. I mean, Papa G is like a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Papa G needs to be your like rap name, please. <laughs> I don't actually know how you're supposed to pronounce that. I think they said it in the in the show, but I can't remember. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't know either. But I, I know that he, he he sure has a presence on the stage. I know somebody's gonna tell me I'm being super insensitive saying Papa G, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, you guys are the least researched musical theater thing, and I like musical theater, and this is not musical oh, theater. Man, I To be a sign that my life is forever yours, and you are mine. mine. Uh, arrogant fool, uh, think you can hold back death. Stay away. Uh, this boy is mine. Uh, I am his dime. Sure is a grave, you must accept what he is. Now his life is forever mine. Take mine for Forever his. yours first? Sure, go into it. Let's go, boy. I mean, this is this is the, like, romance number. Right. I feel like it's kind of important. Yep, that's important. Um, it's when Daniel and Timun are finally brought together by the vicissitudes yeah. of fate. Yes. But uh, Daniel is still, like, on his deathbed, essentially, yeah. and and Papa G shows up to uh, take them, and he twists the song 
into this like forever mine yes. kind of thing, so which cool. is great. <laughs> um, which is fantastic, and I love I love that like that they take the romance number and then they make it the villain song. I think they should do that more <laughs> often. Like Mother Knows Best would have been better if like it started with Flynn Rider and um, what's her name like doing kink play, and then the Mother Gothel comes in and is like, "No, Mother Knows Best, don't put the dildo in him." Oh God. <laughs> I think we watched a different show, Jess. I feel like we watched a different movie on that one. <laughs> hey, hey. All right. But if I live there and the night will fall, mama, mama. all alone in the dark, you'll be terrified. Mama, mama, hey. But you will make it through. Because I am liking you. Mama will provide is like such such a fun number. Like from the moment it starts, I like just want to get on my feet and just dance along with it. I it's it's definitely fun. I, I mean, I'm surprised you like this one so much, considering it has like no pro- plot relevance, and that's usually your thing. I it usually is, but sometimes you just <laughs> need a charm number that just reminds you, oh, I'm a human. I'm allowed to feel things that aren't just like plot relevant. Like let let's dive in, guys. Fair enough. It's not as dumb as something like um, King Herod's song. King Herod's song is amazing, okay? And you need to shut your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I respectfully disagree. It's hilarious. Not all funny songs fit into the musicals. They do if you just listen to them by by themselves. Yes. That song is a lot of fun if it's just on its own. But in the context of the greatest story, it's really dumb. Yeah, but I don't care. (laughs) Andrew just likes his immediate satisfaction at things. Well, Mama will provide, as you... I'm like King Herod. As you said, (laughs) is still kind of plot relevant, but it's more just like... It is. A moment for a really talented actor to act the shit out of this... uh, Perform the shit out of a number. They get down and dirty in that sand. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, Let's see. You want to talk about a part of us? Um, Sure. What do you have to say? It feels like... A re- satisfying ending, like a lot of these songs that end tragically, kind or shows yeah. that end tragically tend to kind of overplay the point and try to play up the melodrama. Whereas this one, it just you gotta you gotta have that that funeral uh, march play. If it's not a funeral, it's a trial. End. One of those two things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, it's a uh, you know, they, I I don't even remember them really showing that much of the death. It's mostly the tree that they show, right? Especially at the end. Um, so they really try to make it more uplifting than, you know, super depressing. Yeah, and in this like in this world where there's multiple gods and polytheism and all that, it doesn't really view death as, which I find interesting, as a bad thing. It's like more becoming well, one they do. in peace. They do view death as a bad thing. I mean, death, the god of death is the main villain. So it is certainly something they're trying to avoid. Um, but I think what it's what this song is trying to show is that she is she was such a good person that even the god of death is gonna be nice. God, they went real Hades town there, didn't they? I I suppose. You know, twenty. I mean, Hades. Twenty years before Hades town was the thing, they went full Hades town. They went full Hades. This was way before Hades town. This was twenty years before that. This came out in the wow. early nineties. Yeah. Oh wow! It seemed like uh. Well, I mean, we watched a revival, but it felt more modern. Yeah, it does feel timeless in a good modern way. Yeah. No, I I would have expected this came out, like, maybe five years ago. (laughs) Why do you feel that way? Because I had the same feeling when I first saw the revival. I'm like, oh, this must have been, like, you know, early 2000s, mid-2000s, but 91 was its first, or 90 was when it hit Broadway. I feel like 90s musicals that we usually watch have a certain feel to them. You mean, like, Rent? (laughs) Or falsettos. Maybe I might. Yeah, it's like it's basically Rent or falsettos. Those are the two '90s feels. And then you got a passion right in the middle, like Stephen Sondheim's Passion or Assassins. You got that mixed in too. Yeah. Whereas this doesn't really feel like any of those. This feels more like a something that would come out now, like a like a Beetlejuice or something like that, where it's like a very different like music style and it's a little more fun. 
than you would expect that. It kind I don't of know. feels like Hades Town. I know I just brought that up, but in the same feel of like this really tr- like intense magical idea being bogged down into something much more palatable and more fun. I think it does a great job. It's like Hades Town if instead if instead of like Americana folk music, it was more like island folk music. Yes, exactly. And that's pretty much what it is. And I like island <laughs> folk musical music a lot more than I like Americana folk music. So I kind of like the cast recording to this. Like when I turn it on, I enjoy this a lot more. I like Hades Town more, I think. But oh, Hades Town I, is I like... a better like altogether piece in my opinion. But I think that I would enjoy just turning this on and listening to it all the way through more than Hades Town. I mean, I like the music to Hades Town a lot. I think I, it's really well written, but I don't think it's... I think this is also well written. But uh, we're not we're not measuring dicks. Musical theater dicks here, Andrew. Uh, music is a competition, and there are clear winners and clear losers. Okay, that's all it's I have to like say. It's just like the Oscars. Is is does your musical win the Tony? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, this didn't. Actually, it didn't win it until the revival when it won Best Revival of a Musical. Yeah, which Best Revival, more like Best Sloppy Seconds, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Can we please have Andrew announce Best Revival of a Musical at the 2020 Tony Awards and say, more like Best Sloppy Seconds of a Musical. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> Everyone's just like, boo! Oh, don't boo Get me, the, I'm right! Get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Any other songs you want to talk about? Uh, nothing in particular, no. Right. I think, uh, I mean, as a, as a whole, the, the music is very well written. Uh, and it has a few songs that are more like, uh, you know, more melodic than other ones, but I feel like it really, the strongest point is when the music is like bouncy, that bouncy, upbeat island feel. Very good. All right, Andrew. Well, since we made it there, um, I'm curious. I, I, how would you muppetize this? Because <laughs> since we have gods and it's kind of broken down in like a really extreme way, it feels like something like you bring out Harry Belafonte and Kermit and you got you got yourself a great musical. Okay, Goddess of Love is Miss Piggy. Okay. Easy. That or Earth, Goddess of Earth. So we can have Miss Piggy do Mama Will Provide. I actually think that's better. Mama Will Provide played by Miss Piggy. <laughs> I don't know who would play Goddess of Love. Miss Piggy could just do both. <laughs> no, no, no. Goddess of Love. Miss Piggy be... as all the gods? No, because you have to have Animal be the goddess of god of death. No, no, no. You don't get Animal for that. That is the one where you get like the uh the spooky Muppet. I forget his name. Uh but he was like one of the villains of the new movie. Oh yeah. Um it's like Uncle Uncle Death or something like that, honestly. <laughs> Uncle Fester. It's not Uncle Fester. Uh hang on. I'm actually gonna look it up. I'm I'm a little curious. Is is Uncle Deadly? That that would be my choice for that. All right. Uh, Who'd you get to play Papa Gay? Papa G. Papa G is uh, Uncle Deadly. Oh, sorry. Um, who'd you get to play uh, Azuli? Azuli? Yeah. The goddess of love. I'm not sure. That's what I'm saying. Uh, maybe we just get maybe we just get a guest for that one. I well, we need a guest for like uh T Moon. Like we need like a Brandy or someone in there. Yeah. Um. Would Kermit Daniel... have a place in here? Do you think? Maybe like one of her parents. I could see Kermit as I could see Muppets doing all the storyteller roles, and Kermit could definitely be like the the lead storyteller. He's like interviewing people in his like detective uniform. He's like, no, he's like a narrator or something. Hey, oh, we're like, on this island door. Then you got an Animal on the steel drums. Oh shit, dude! Actually, you know what? That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Maybe they like maybe they actually perform it like on stage and there's like a live band there and you have electric mayhem playing the songs. I am so and animals on steel drums. <laughs> We're pretty stumped on this one, guys. Send us your Muppetized version of Once on This Island. Yeah, this is a tough one. Uh I mean, who plays Daniel? Um I would say I would say you could have Kermit play Daniel, but Kermit no, you as a have, love interest what's is weird. His name? Um the the Jason Siegel brother. Uh, okay, I see. Okay, Whistleman. Yeah, because we already hate him. He might as well be- make the dick move in the end. Yeah, I mean, actually, Daniel could be uh, Pepe the, shr- uh, the Shrimp. 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm a one woman man, man. Except for like, I already was like with you a little bit, but like, uh, I gotta marry this girl. Like, hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Okay, okay. I don't think you can muppetize this one. I'm gonna say it. What? This is un un muppetizable. What? I'm labeling it. <laughs> no, you can't. It's against the rules. Unmuppetizable. <gasps> I disagree, guys. You gotta you gotta prove them wrong in the comments. <laughs> if someone can come up with a good Muppet one, I'll, I will share your comment on my on my tweets. Too. Yes, and all all four, 14 of his followers will then see it. I have like 10 followers, excuse you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I oversold you. You're right, you're right. <laughs> uh, Alright, Andrew, what is your overall thoughts on Once on this Island and your cheese rating? Do they have island cheese? Don't steal my fucking island cheese! Okay. Well, my overall thoughts is actually, this is a very fun show. Um, right, it's short to the point, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel rushed or anything like that. It feels like they flesh it out exactly as much as they need to, and they tell the story exactly as they want it to. And the music is fantastic, and there's a lot of good dancing. Uh, the only few flaws is that the romance is a little bit thin, and some of the characters are underdeveloped. But really... Uh, it makes up for it just with pure fun factor, I feel. Um, so, I think it's very good. As far as a cheese rating, I'm gonna give it a... I don't know what type, but I'm just gonna give it goat cheese, because they got a real goat for this show. I agree, you know what? That's a good answer. Good answer! <laughs> Family feud, good answer! Good answer, good answer! And then, then it doesn't... It shows the big X. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Steve, I'm gonna go with my, my girlfriend's vaginal mucus. Good answer, good answer! Good answer, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be up there! Uh, the, the question was condiments. Uh, <laughs> I said what I said, let's go! <laughs> good answer! Good answer! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Either way, I think What's on This Island is such such a fun show. Like it is a joy to watch from beginning to end. It's on a national tour right now, and I'm hoping I can catch it in Detroit if it gets here because it's it's great. It is high quality, high quality work. And so I am going to be giving it pineapple pecan cheese ball, which is an Islander cheese. Uh, is it the correct island though? I don't care. Is it is it from this island, Jess? Once on this island? The titular this island? Ah. <laughs> you're right, Andrew. Oh, I've gone too far in a few places. He's gone too far. Gone too far in a few places. We, we got we got to stop it. We got to stop this. Jess just has George Lucas on his mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> George Lucas is always on my mind. If you if you went into Jess's brain, the whole thing would just be flannel. <laughs> <laughs> and BO. Flannel shirts and BO. <laughs> all right um all right but you know who doesn't smell like flannel shirts and bo um not me our wonderful patrons thank you guys for listening you each and every one of you people listening to this i got this far into the episode i'm gonna give you a kiss on the forehead if you tell me you got to this part of the video or podcast and like see me on the street i will owe you one kiss on the forehead i'll give you my coronavirus but you'll get that kiss um, so please, please leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. We're all there on Musicals with Cheese. Our Twitter is at Cheesy Musicals. Our Patreon is Musicals with Cheese. Our Instagram is Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is Musicals with Cheese. Our email is MusicalTheaterLives at gmail.com. Send us an email. Send us some love or hate. I don't care. Just don't leave us a review because, you know, I, I, I don't want hate, hateful reviews. Um, our title card was created by the amazing Jolene Casco. Go send her some love at her Instagram, at Jolene Casco. All right, Andrew, is there anything else you got to say before we wrap this on up? We love you all. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Oh, gods, oh, gods, oh, gods, hear my prayer. That was pretty good. All right. We'll see you <laughs> next time on Musicals with Cheese. Cheese.